So welcome everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar to gain more insight about the new resources from TJ Maths. Today we plan to give you some more information and hopefully help with any queries that you may have. So you now have three textbooks per level format. So we have books 1A, 1B and 1C for primaries 2, 3 and 4 and second level 2A, 2B and 2C for primaries 5, 6, 7. Along with that digitally, you have the corresponding resources. So you've got the in-depth teaching guides, the practice worksheets, assessment quizzes, you've got mental math worksheets and you've got your editable course planners as well. All the textbooks and digital content up to 2B have now been fully published and 2C Print publishes this Friday with the digital content following early next week and that will be everything fully available. So I'm Karen Kidd, I have met and spoken to you some of you before, um, if I haven't then lovely to meet you and welcome along to everyone that's here today. Uh, I'm your school's main contact for these resources so I'm always on hand, I'd be more than happy to visit your school to discuss everything further after today's webinar or you can have a telephone chat a teams and help with any queries provide samples and look at bespoke quotes so i'll put my details in the chat shortly if you would like to get in touch please feel free to do so so also on today's webinar we have freddie morris he's part of the customer success team and shortly freddie will be giving you a look at the boost platform which handles all of our digital content for tj maths and it's got all of those supporting resources for the new textbooks within it. Also joining us, we have Catherine Murphy and Dr Naomi Norman. They are part of our author team for first and second level maths, and they're about to spend some time delving into the theory and pedagogy underpinning the new series. Catherine is an independent mathematics education consultant, trainer and author. She's 20 years experience working in the UK schools and has spent a lot of that time also developing mathematics content, both print and digital for the UK and international schools market, as well as creating and delivering professional development both here in the UK and abroad. Catherine is a qualified teacher with a master's in education and a degree in mathematics and philosophy. She's currently continuing her academic journey by working towards a professional doctorate with a focus on mathematical problem solving. And our other author joining us on the webinar today is Dr Naomi Norman, who is a qualified teacher with a PhD in mathematics education from Oxford University. Naomi works as an independent education researcher, consultant and author, and has more than 20 years experience consulting and writing for mathematics education print and digital products. Naomi has been involved in large scale education programmes and curriculum creation, resource design and delivery at every level of education from preschool to adults, working with small to multinational companies, charities and governments across the world. So I'd now like to hand over to Catherine and Naomi, who are going to spend some time talking about the theory and pedagogy of the new series from TJ Maths. Thank you, Karen. Um, as Karen said, I'm Naomi Norman, and thank you very much for joining us today. Hello, and I'm Catherine Murphy. Just checking, can you all see the screen share there? Yeah, Lovely. we're good. So we've been working hard to update and improve TJ for you and your pupils. We know many teachers were themselves taught maths using the much loved TJ. And we know that Scottish teachers have relied upon it to support their classroom practice for many years. But we also know the maths curriculum in Scotland has moved on since TJ was first published and some ways in which pupils are taught math has changed too. So we've taken the very best of the original TJ and we have developed the seven key mathematics pedagogical principles as the foundation to the updated TJ. To do this, we've drawn on the fundamental things we know makes good maths teaching and confident young mathematicians, and that we believe to be important to facilitate maths teaching at first and second level. You can read these seven principles, our seven P's, on the right of your screen here. We're going to talk about each one of them, say what we've done to address it and how this can support your practice and so help you to develop competent and confident mathematicians. Our first P and the first pedagogical principle we're going to look at is preparation. 
Before updating TJ, the starting point for our preparation was, of course, Scotland's Curriculum for Excellence. We knew from our discussions with teachers that it was really important to you that we completely cover every experience and outcome and ensure we reach the benchmark required at each level. For that reason, we mapped the Curriculum for Excellence to the original TJ content and where there were gaps, we absolutely ensured that we filled them. For example, let's consider this experience and outcome. I'll just pause for a moment and give you some time to read it. Let's start with the very first part of the statement. I have extended the range of whole numbers I can work with. At first level, pupils met numbers up to 1,000. So at second level, it made sense that we extend the range beginning in book 2A to consider numbers up to 10,000, as in this first question from chapter eight. Then in book 2B, we extend the range further to consider numbers up to 1 million, as you can see in this question from book 2B, chapter 17, where having become familiar with numbers of this size, pupils are then asked to order them. Now looking at the second part of the experience and outcome statement, having explored how decimal fractions are constructed, and you can see here that pictorial representations are employed to help pupils understand the construction of decimal fractions when they very first meet them in book 2A. And finally, the last part of the experiences and outcome statement can explain the link between a digit, its place and its value. Here you can see this is done with question like questions like these with decimals up to and including hundredths in book 2A and then up to and including thousandths in book 2B. So we can be absolutely confident that this experience and outcome is completely covered. Then at the end of each level, as part of our preparation, we checked against the Curriculum for Excellence benchmarks too, ensuring that TJ's content and questions are continually supporting learners in reaching the required standard. So as you can see, you can be confident that if you use TJ, you're comprehensively following Scotland's Curriculum for Excellence for Numeracy and Mathematics. There'll be no gaps in your teaching or your pupils' learning. You can see the entire mapping for TJ against the Curriculum for Excellence in the course planners on our digital platform, Boost. Now let's look at progression. The six book in the, books in the series are carefully structured to ensure that concepts build from year to year, chapter to chapter, and question to question. Year to year, each year, mathematical concepts met in the previous year are built upon. Let's consider, for example, 2D shapes for level two. This belt builds on the learning in level one. In primary five, pupils are introduced to the names of polygons on the concept of regular and irregular shapes. In primary six, pupils learn about different types of triangles and the properties of squares and quadrilaterals. And then in primary seven, pupils consider circles, properties of quadrilaterals and polygons. Mathematical language and notation is similarly developed with a focus on using accurate mathematical language but introducing it slowly and consistently to ensure pupils become familiar with new words. Chapter to chapter. Within each book, chapters have been carefully written so that all necessary prerequisite knowledge has been taught before it's required. For example, in book 2a, before converting units of length in chapter 14, pupils have already learned how to multiply and divide by 10, 100 and 1000. This ensures there are no gaps in prerequisite knowledge that could obstruct any new learning. Then question to question. Within each section, exercises are structured to gradually deepen pupils' conceptual understanding. So the first few questions of the exercise practice these basic principles with enough repetition to consolidate understanding. These questions are typically accompanied by a tree icon then gradually questioning gets a little harder in small manageable steps and then develops into problem solving. These final challenging questions in exercises 
are typically accompanied by a sun symbol. There's also plenty of opportunity for assessment, both formative and summative. At the beginning of each chapter, there is revision chapter zero with questions covering the previous year's content, allowing you to identify any gaps in understanding before starting the new year. At the end of each book, there is a revision chapter covering all the concepts pupils have met during that year. There's also revisit, review, revise sections at the end of each chapter, as in the original TJ, which offer opportunities to consolidate understanding and identify any misconceptions which may have arisen during that chapter. And in the teacher guide, you'll find ideas for how to address any of these misconceptions. And the online boost resources provide yet more assessment questions. Now on to our third principle, our third P that underpins TJ, and that's pedagogy. One mathematics pedagogical principle that's widely believed and proven to be an effective approach to developing mathematical understanding is that of concrete pictorial abstract. This is something we have decided to integrate more widely into the new TJ, especially for number topics. By concrete, we mean the use of concrete materials, like fruit as shown here, and it's used to model dividing by four by sharing, then grouping, and how this relates to the four times tables. Once pupils are confident with the concrete, then they can move on to working with pictorial representations. So here the counters are represented in an array with equal rows and columns, and the link is made between multiplication and division, so deepening pupils' understanding. And Naomi, something that I have found is a good thing to do when working with pictorial representations like these is to ask pupils to close their eyes and imagine the picture. That way they're being encouraged to begin to visualise mathematical concepts, which will help when they move on to the abstract. And in fact, this, along with other relevant and good ideas, can be found in the TJ teacher guide. So it's really worth using those. And once pupils are confident with the pictorial, then you can begin to move on to more abstract questions like this. So just to summarise, pupils are developing their mathematical understanding from the concrete hands-on use of fruit, in this case, or perhaps blocks or counters to help them to multiply and divide, to the pictorial and visualisation work that Catherine mentioned with counters arranged in arrays, to being able to answer multiplication and division questions like this in abstract. Related to pictorial, concrete and abstract is the idea of scaffolding, where questions are really carefully ordered so that earlier questions on a concept provide lots of support and gradually that support, the scaffolding, is removed. Again, this is a pedagogical principle we have adopted in every exercise in TJ. So, for example, having already read positive and negative temperatures on thermometers that go up in steps of one degree Celsius, here you can see that in question seven, pupils are told that the thermometer counts up in steps of two degrees Celsius before then being asked for the temperature, which in this case is positive. In subsequent questions that we haven't shown here, but pupils are given more thermometers that count up in two degrees Celsius, like this one, some of them showing negative temperatures. And then they're asked to compare and say which thermometer shows the warmest temperature. By question 10, which you can see here, pupils are asked to identify the steps the thermometer counts up in for themselves. And then finally, in question 11, all the pictorial support is gone, it's removed, and pupils are simply asked to compare two temperatures in abstract. And notice there in question 11, the use of temperature in parts of Scotland. In fact, we've ensured that there's some Scottishness where relevant throughout the scheme, but I'm digressing. Well, and another thing to notice here when looking at these questions is that we've been really careful with the use of simple language and no redundant words in the new TJ. Throughout, we have also put all new sentences in questions on new lines to help with literacy and accessibility. And we've embedded this type of pedagogical thinking throughout TJ. Our aim has been to do as much of this work for you as we can so that you don't have to do it and you can confidently embrace TJ knowing that your children 
and getting the best possible support with their mathematical learning and developing their mathematical understanding. Our fourth principle underpinning TJ is practice, and there is lots of it. There are a huge number of practice opportunities throughout the TJ scheme. We've already spoken about the revision chapters at the beginning and end of each unit, um, each um, textbook, sorry, and the revisit, review, revise sections at the end of each chapter. Then there are the exercises themselves, offering plenty of practice questions as well. The teacher guide also gives suggestions on paired, group or individual activities that you could use in the classroom. And don't forget the online resources on the Boost platform. There you'll find additional questions that can be used for homework or further practice in the classroom, assessments to be used formatively or summatively, and mental maths questions linked to every chapter in the textbook. So really there is a wealth of practice available from TJ. Now on to our fifth principle, and we've made our fifth principle about play because we all know the importance of play to children. And so we've integrated play into the textbooks in some of the Now Try This activities. Play gives children the opportunity to try things out, like in this activity here, where children are encouraged to explore rectangles or with an area of 12 centimetres squared. Play also gives children the opportunity to develop independence through making their own choices, like in this activity here, where children are asked to create their very own sequences. You'll also find play activity suggestions in the teacher guides, like this one that, that ends a section where children are learning the six times table and it's suggested that you play six times table bingo. The other thing about play is that it's fun, and we all know that having fun makes the learning all the more engaging. Now on to our sixth principle, participation. We know that a powerful way to develop mathematical understanding is through discussion and experimentation. This philosophy lies at the heart of the TJ model. In the textbooks, you'll find suggestions for paired or grouped work, questions which challenge learners to explain their reasoning, spot mistakes and make links between concepts. The now try this, like this one here, are often opportunities for discussions and grouped work. In the teacher guide, you'll find suggestions for discussion, activities and investigations. Pupils are encouraged to talk about their learning and reason out loud. Text in bold in the teacher guide indicates what the teacher should be saying or asking. The teacher guide suggests a lesson structure where practical and abstract activities are interwoven with opportunities for thinking and discussion, with a reflect section built into every lesson and a further opportunity to reflect on learning at the end of each lesson. We've worked particularly hard at ensuring the teacher guide enables you to use TJ in an active, and collaborative way in your classroom. But we've also, of course, been mindful that you do not want to read and digest lots of information. So we've kept the advice in the teacher guides as succinct as possible. Our final principle, the seventh P, is purpose. Giving maths a purpose can help engage your pupils as they can see it relates both within the subject and beyond into real life now and in their futures. So that's why in TJ you'll find all kinds of links to real life. For example, this simple map of a Glasgow park to illustrate map scales. You'll find activities that involve children looking beyond the classroom, like this one where they need to look in books and on the internet. And you'll find questions galore, both in the textbooks and on Boost, that are set in real life contexts. So in summary, We've taken the very best of the original TJ and we have further developed it so that it's underpinned by these seven key pedagogical principles. We've matched it to the Curriculum for Excellence and we've done all this so that you can be confident that by embracing TJ at first or second level, you are using a robust and rigorous first and second level maths resource in your classroom and your pupils are given the very best opportunity to develop as successful mathematicians. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
Thank you, Catherine, and thank you, Naomi. That was brilliant. So if you do have any questions at this point in the webinar, then please pop them in the chat and we're going to come to questions at the end. Um, the authors love the questions on the first level webinar, so please put them in there and we will come round to it at the end. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and talk about Boost, which handles all of the content surrounding the, the printed textbooks and the ebooks. So um, I'm going to quickly share my screen with you and show you what you have in Boost. So I'm demonstrating from the first level Boost. So what you have is you have Boost for first level and you also have Boost for second level. So you can purchase one or the other or both um, together. They're on a 12 month subscription at a very reasonable price because we're aware with budgets and things so um that's and it's for whole school access so it can be as many teachers and as many pupils within your school so you get this for first and second level it's the same content but obviously um different for each level so you can see here for um the boost first level you've got your planning and teaching which handles your editable course plans the teachers have been loving them so they're all hyperlinked up to the teaching guides the mental math worksheets um, you have got the assessments, everything is hyperlinked on the course planners for you and it even takes you to that specific part in the ebook as well. Um, and you also have the teaching guide notes like Naomi and Catherine were talking about. So um, it really guides um, the teacher through and gives you as much um, uh, support as, as you want to have to make sure that you can to, um, successfully deliver TJ Maths and on the new levels. So you've got all of that in there. You've also got the ebook. So what we do is we give you one ebook for every printed textbook, and that's for whiteboard purposes. So it saves you standing up with the textbook at the front of the class. You can have it up on the whiteboard or on the projector, um, and you can be displaying it that way. So there is an ebook for each level in there, and you can use uh, many functions on that as well, which Freddie's about to run through. Um, also in Boost, you've got the practice and assessment. So you've got the practice knowledge test. So what we've done with that is if you were a user of TJ Maths previously, you'll know, have known about the homework packs. And um, what we've done is we stepped away from the word homework and we've initiated that with practice. So this can be done within the class. It can be done at home. It can be done interactively or they are available as PDF worksheets as well. So you've got that practice, lots of consolidation in there. And then you've got those mental mass worksheets which have been changed from the previous ones as well um, on these mental mass worksheets there's one for every chapter within the textbook um, and you have five questions on it to be delivered verbally and the questions and answers are on each mental mass worksheet and all linked in the course planners as well and then you have the assessment knowledge test so these are also available interactively. You can assign them to pupils to complete on their own devices um, and that feeds back into a reporting tool, which again, Freddie's going to run over. Um, and you've also got them as printable worksheets. So if you have pupils that um, don't have internet access at home or you don't have those devices within the school, you do have still have access to those as um, PDFs. And then you've got all of the answers. I will just highlight as well for all of the first level printed textbooks, the answers are in the back of the book in the second level textbooks all of the answers are via a qr code which is on the back of the textbook and then you also have it on the inside back page as well and um, if you qr code that it'll take you straight to all of the answers and that's for all of the second level textbooks so i'm now going to introduce you to freddie freddie is going to run over just some of the functionalities of boost but if you were to take on or you maybe have taken on you've had a call with freddie already and um, he will run into it in more detail about how you can get up and running with it and uh, do your onboarding with that. But Freddie, I will let you take it over. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, so yeah, I will run through all the features and just the, la the layout of the platform. Now, when we're on Boost, there's a few different ways of accessing all these features, um, but we're just going to go straight into the courses and access everything from within there. So on the opener course is then where our TJ courses will pop up, so second level in this case. Um, so I'm just going to click on the tile to open that up and we'll be brought to the first main page, which is the resource list or the contents list. So this contains every resource within Boost on here. 
um, and I'll show you a different few ways of accessing them all. So we can just scroll through to find them. Um, we've also got a filter to choose particular resources. We've also got a contents list on the side, um, so we can go into specific books. They'll be split up between 2A to 2B to 2C. Um, 2C again will be published on to Boost next week. Um, so let me open up some of these resources so you can have a look and see how they all kind of work. So I'm going to filter first to the teacher notes, um, which is what's called in Boost, but those are the teaching guides. So if I filter the teaching guides, all of these will pop up. We have ones that introduce each chapter um, and introduce the book as well. Um, if I open up one as an example, I'll open up one for this unit in particular. Um, so they're like PDF documents on to Boost, and we can go into full screen here and then we can kind of scroll through. So these are very, very useful to refer to and they'll take you through the different learning activities and so on and so forth. Um, so these are really, really useful to access and to say you've got one for every single unit and one that introduces each of the chapters as well. Some of the other resources, and I'm just going to exit and go back. Some of the other resources that we've got are, for example, the practice and assessment and mental maths. So we've got them in worksheet form. We do have them in knowledge test form, which we're going to show you in just a short while. Um, but let me open up, for example, a worksheet. So just to see how they look. So I've got a practice worksheet here. I'll just open that one up. And again, like the teaching guides, these ones are in PDF form. And you can see here, so the practice ones will cover um topics well that particular unit and there'll be a few questions long um we've also then got assessment and mental maths as well which i will actually show you in the course plans as well but we can access them from the resource list at the very end of each book and um, i'm going to show you the course plans in a second so you can see how to access them as well and see what they look like too one of the other resources that we've got within um the resource list is flashcards which I'll just open one up. So these are quite useful for revision. Again, you can share these with your students or have them up on the um, projected up on the board. Um, and these will go through different terms with um, the meanings and so on, depending on the topics and units. Um, so that's another kind of insight into some of the resources that we've got. Um, I'll load up a few in a second, but I'm going to go now into course plans. So it's a great way to view your resources as well. So you've got two different ways of viewing them, but they're also very, very good for actual planning because you can completely customize these and use these to your liking. So they're split again between 2A to um, B and 2C. Um, so these course plans, how they're laid out is each blue row is its own chapter. And then below that um, blue row is the, or below that chapter is all the units within them. Um, for the columns, we've got the corresponding experience and outcomes and benchmarks that go alongside. Um, these are all live links. So the textbook reference column will take us into the ebook version of the textbook. The teaching guides um, column will take us into the teaching guide I just showed you for that particular unit. Under resources, we've got the practice worksheet that I just showed, as well as the practice quizzes, which I'll come into in a short while. We've also got, and these are great to access your assessment and mental maths because they are located, for example, in the blue rows for the chapters. So you can actually see exactly when they're coming in. Um, they're quite nicely structured. Um, and you've also got the answer sheets as well that pop up in there too. Um, so this is another great way just to use to get into all your resources. But these are completely customizable with a note section, um, but also the ability to change this. So if you want to go and um, completely customize this to your own liking, you can do so. And you can download and print them off and use them for handwritten work. So really good for time saving, really good to access all your resources very, very quickly. Um, I'm going to pop back out of there now. I'm going to load up lessons. So lessons is a feature you can use to build in your own lessons, either for your own planning or to actually display up on the board as well and have um, shown up while teaching. Um, so I've just got a few examples in here where we've just built um, a couple mock lessons um, and you can build these exactly as you like. You can do any titles. For example, the example we made, we've just followed along with the chapters and units. Um, these are great because you can add in the resources, any resource within Boost, any of the teaching guides, flashcards, tests, so on. But you can upload your own resources as well. So this is quite useful if you um, have any particular PowerPoints or Word documents that you like to use and you still like to use, you can pop them into Boost. You have them in one location, um, either for your own planning or there'll always be a play button on these lessons. So you can then go through them, for example, and have things projected up on the board and then you can go through your different, um, you can actually use them teaching in lessons as well. And for example, a PowerPoint, we can go full screen with it. I won't just now, 
but we can um, then have the PowerPoint and use those up. So very useful for your own resources, but also to just plan in your own lessons and keep that all on boost as well. That's a very brief overview on the lessons. I'm going to pop now into, and I'll hit back a few times, I'm just going to go into ebooks. Um, so you can see how those look as well. I've actually preloaded one just to make sure I'm on the beginning page. Ebooks remember where you left off, so I just wanted to open up so we're on the beginning page. Um, so again, within the ebook section, you have 2ATB, 2C to follow next week. Um, as I say, they remember where you left off and these are individual to your own teacher accounts. If one teacher is teaching from the same book and is in one page and another one's in another page teaching at the same time, it won't conflict. You have your own ebooks that you can use. Um, so we've got a scroll button at the bottom or we can use the pages to scroll through. You can, if you're on the contents list, you can click a particular page and that will then take you into that particular page. Um, what you've also got some other features that we can use here. So if I highlight something like a sentence, we can actually add in our own notes. So this is quite useful for planning. Um, anything that you add will then just be saved in there. Um, and then you can click on it to bring up your note again. You can also just highlight things in colors, any key terms that you want to highlight. You can link in other web pages or other ebook pages, and you can voice record. So another good feature for record um for planning as well um you can zoom into these ebooks so that they're bigger up on the screen i've just kept it zoomed out just to keep it more visible on the team share another tool which is really good when you do use the front of class teaching if you're using an interactive whiteboard there's a markup tool so you could use this markup tool if you perhaps wanted to go through some questions and answers together as a class have students come up you could do that um, there's a pen or pencil feature and you can come up and for example circle answers and so on so really good to actually use this in an interactive way as well as just having it for front of class teaching and it is also if you want to use the note feature but you want to put them anywhere there's a little sticky note as well that you can stick anywhere and add in your own notes but those are your two the markup tool and then the kind of highlighting tool are the main functions of the ebook. So really useful to use for your front of class teaching rather than just having physical textbooks. So that brings me on to the knowledge tests. So the practice and assessment worksheets also come in knowledge test form. So these are interactive and auto marked um, and they do feed into a report section, which I will load up in a second as well. Um, but I'll just try and load up a couple of knowledge tests to show you how they look and how they all work, if I can. If not, I'll open up a new page and we'll go from there. So we can access the knowledge test from the course plans. But again, I'm just showing you the other tabs so you can see different ways to access. And there we go. So I'm just going to load up this first one that we've got up here, the practice quiz. So as a teacher, you'll be able to see the quiz. Um, and go through the questions. So you'll also get some recommended resources on the side. So the top two will be the most relevant ones. So the teaching guide for that particular quiz and unit, as well as the PDF version. And then following on from that are just the chronological order of the next topics and units. Um, you can also share anything with students. So there's a share icon. I won't go too deep into it today, but you can share within Boost or Classroom or Teams. So you can actually share these tests as work as well for your students. Um, if I start a quiz now, again, you could use this in front of class teaching. You could project this up on the board and go through um, together as a class. Um, but so you have full access to doing all of these. But this is also what your students will see if they're completing independently with these different quizzes. There's different ways of answering the questions. So we have got some where they drag and drop. We've got some where they are typed in. We may not have an example on this practice one, so only a few questions long, but we do have um, ones where there are multiple choice and ones where you have a list of equations and answers and you draw a line just to match up the correct ones. So it keeps it engaging, not just always typing in all the time. Um, if the student is completing their test, they can skip questions and come back to them when they feel happy. And then when happy, they can complete. There'll be a warning if there's anything that's um, uncompleted, so they can go back and finish if they need to. Otherwise, when all happy to complete, they'll bring up their results. So they'll be able to see, and you'll be able to see this as well. Um, so they'll have a total feedback and score section, um, as well as individual kind of reviews of the actual questions and answers. Um, so anything red or amber where they've maybe got one out of three correct, for example, can go and review and can go and check the correct answer as well. And you can see this as well. Um, so you'll get notifications when your students have completed the tests. But that brings me into reports. So while she can view all these 
individually, there are reports that we can run that you can look at your students' results um, across full classes comparing to the school average um, and just getting a little bit more insight and in-depth into those results in particular. So I'm going to head on into the reporting section. And there's a few different reports we can run. I'm not going to go through all of them today just for time, um, but we've got knowledge test results reports um, so we can see some good overall results for individual students or full classes and groups. Progress over time is another really good one. You can choose a specific time frame um, and you'll get a line graph where you can look back across progress and see how your students have been um, doing. Gap analysis, you can compare individual student results compared to full class um, and groups. Um, there's another nice one, task completion report. So when you're setting um, those knowledge tests, you can actually review and see how many of them have been completed and how many have been completed on time. So that's another nice one to run. I'm going to load up today the knowledge test results report. And just to show you how it kind of all works, so we can pick our group class or individual learner in your case, your students or your pupils. I'm going to do a full class for this one and my one should be test class four. So I'm going to pick them and scroll through to find my class and we'll generate. Hopefully in a few seconds or so, what we'll have is a bit of a summary bar graph at the top here. So at the moment, I've only had this one class complete. And what we'll have with this bar graph, once you have multiple students completing your um, and multiple classes, you'll have a school average built up as well. So the purple bar here is just indicating the average for the class in this case. Um, and we don't have any others, but when we do, we'd have a school average to compare to as well. Um, we can then scroll down and filter to look a little bit more in depth into these particular um, knowledge tests. So I'm just going to filter to one month and we should have a couple that come up here um, in a second. Yeah, so we'll get a table like view of those particular tests completed in this case in the past month. Um, as we ran it for a full class, we've got all our students below here with the top row being the average. If you ran it for one student, you just have um, one student row appearing. Um, each column is its own quiz. Now, because we're looking at a lot of different numbers, we can toggle heat maps here. So a little bit easier to see. So we'll get a green if um, results are 70 percent above amber 69 to 40 and then red anything below. So you can quickly see here, for example, we can see practice quiz multiplying two digit numbers. That one we're not so confident on. So if we want to look a little bit more in depth into that, we can actually click on that onto that particular quiz. Um, and we'll get, we'll get a question breakdown bar graph instead up here. So we can look at individual questions, which ones we're confident on, which ones we weren't. And then we'll get another table view below here. Um, well, again, we'll be able to see the total score, but it's just kind of split up in a nice way just for this particular test that we've looked at. Um, you can click into responses. So if you wanted to bring up that view I showed you just earlier, you can then go and look at that and see exactly what the students saw as well. And there's a few other toggles across the top here. So, for example, you could look at question analysis. Actually, no questions. You could look at question analysis actually um, won't be relevant here. So we'll look at questions. Um, so you can then look at a table view that then splits up the questions. Or there's a gap analysis, which is the one I wanted to click on, um, which isn't as in-depth as the gap analysis report that we can run. But this one can just give you some toggles that you can compare to the class average with arrows. Um, once you have multiple competing, you actually have a school average that appears in the gap column as well. So that actually brings me, and that's a very brief overview, but it brings me to the end of running through Boost and all of its features. There are more to it, but that just gives you a nice overview of how to navigate the platform and everything that we've got within it. Freddie, that was brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, and don't feel that you have to take all of that in, um, because if you do take on Boost, I hand you to Freddie afterwards. Freddie sets up a Teams call with you, with you and the staff, and just make sure that everybody's in, um, kind of on the same level, comfortable using it. And I know some of you on the webinar today have already had that with Freddie and you're using it as well. So, um, you know, if you have any questions on Boost, please feel free to put them in the chat. We're about to come to questions. There is a question in the chat for the authors, which I, hope I will come to in a minute. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you're interested in any of the resources, or you want to find out more, if you would like me to set up some free trials or some samples, I'm going to put my details in the chat. Feel free to get in touch. Um, it just so happens that my authority is one of the authorities, the first ones to come off for October break. 
Um, so I actually finish on annual leave um, this Friday and I'm not back until the 16th of October. And I know the 16th of October is a popular week around Scotland for other authorities being off. So if you would like me to come into the school and have a chat and show you the books in person, get in touch with me if you can um, before Friday and I'll get something in the diary for when you're back and when I'm back and we can even do calls or teams as well. So I'll put my details in the chat and look forward to um, speaking with you. And if anybody has feedback who is currently using Boost, who have been using Boost and spoken to Freddie already, I think it would be good if you could put something in the chat for other people who aren't familiar with it. That would be brilliant. Um, but we are going to go to questions. So if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat now. Um, got one for Catherine and Naomi, so you might have seen it. Um, I haven't seen, it's from Mrs Geddes, so I haven't seen a book yet. Um, tenths and hundreds are in 2A, thousands are in 2B, and she's asking what is in 2C? Um, so, as, as Catherine said in our presentation, what we've done is tried to build conceptual understanding across the, the 2A, 2B, 2C. So students in the Curriculum for Excellence aren't required to do 10 thousandths, but they are required to do decimal calculation. So what we move on to in 2C is at the beginning of many of the chapters, we have Remember, Remember box, um, and that quickly allows you to review what they've learned before. So there's a Remember, Remember box that covers tenths and hundredths, and then they move on in 2C to cover decimal calculations. So they're building on their understanding of decimals that they've built up already in 2A and 2B. Brilliant, thank you. Is there any other questions? If you don't want to put them in the chat, please do speak up if you would like to ask anything while you have um, Catherine, Naomi, Freddie and myself here. Um, if anybody has any feedback who's currently using it, that would be great. Otherwise, I think we are finished. Oh, we've got another question from Mr Murray. Um, if we had Boost, would we get to see specifically the benchmarks the children are and uh, are and aren't achieving. Uh, yes, you would be able to measure that in your reports um, on the Boost platform by running your different reports and then on your course planners, you've got your benchmarks um, all marked out for you so you can cross reference that. Hope that helps. Any other questions there? No? Well, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the webinar today with all of us um, regarding the TJ Maths second level. Like we said, the, the last 2C uh, textbook publishes this Friday and then the last bit of content for it, 2C, will um, go into Boost early next week. And then that is it. We are fully published and ready to go. So um, if you would like any other information, just get in touch. My details are in the chat. But thank you very much from me, Kath and Naomi and ready as well. Have a lovely evening. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone.